In this video tutorial, we're going to take a look at Prezi. And Prezi, in my opinion, is a wonderful alternative to PowerPoint and also to Keynote and other presentation software. I honestly am still a big fan of PowerPoint. I use it quite often. I also use Keynote and I like that as well. But Prezi is something a little bit different. It is still a presentation tool, but instead of being slide based it uses zooming and panning to reveal the content that you want to teach and that you want to present so this is prezi.com and if you're going to want to use prezi you need to go here and sign up now you'll notice when you get there there's a pricing link and a login link if you click pricing it basically gives you four options you can see that there's an enjoy option where you get a free month you can see the cost here down at the bottom and I'm sure this will be changing as, as time goes by the pro version is more expensive but it gives you more features and then there's a teams account that has volume based pricing so these are some good options I would recommend that most people start with a fourth option here at the top it says use Prezi for free notice the fine print though all presentations you create will be publicly visible and you will be able to create collaborate and present on Prezi with a hundred megabytes cloud storage so uh, it gives you a limited amount of storage but honestly I used this version of Prezi for years I would say about three to four years I used this very effectively never ran out of space never had any problem at all with it all my presentations were public but I didn't mind this is fine if you want to sign up that way you can click and it takes you to an easy form to fill out for those of you that are teachers however if you're currently teaching and also for students that have an email address from an educational institution there's a better option I'm going to go back and instead of choosing one of these four options, I'm going to go down to the very bottom of the screen and you can see it says students and teachers. You can click educational licenses and this is really great. You can get totally for free what they call the Edu Enjoy account. It's got some of the same features as the regular Enjoy account, not quite as much but it's totally free. You get extra storage, you get the ability to replace the logo. So that's what I recommend for teachers. You also get discounts on these others. So uh, you could just click continue to sign up. Notice that you do need to put in a school email address and then click verify. So at this point I'm gonna assume that you have a Prezi account whether it's the regular open free version or the education free version or a paid version of Prezi and I'm just gonna log into my account once you log into your account it takes you to your Prezi's page you can see here at the top and this is where the Prezi's that you build over time will become accumulated you'll you'll see them here um, as you scroll down but at any time if you want to uh, get back to your list of Prezi's that you've made you would just need to click here where it says your Prezi's and they should be listed there alright I'm gonna create a new Prezi now now you can see there's also a button here at the top for it but I like to click this one so I click new Prezi it opens up the Prezi interface that I'm gonna to use to build this Prezi presentation so the first option that you have when you load up the uh, Prezi interface is it asks you to do one of a couple of things you can either use the templates that they have created these are pre-made themes and templates that you can adapt and use for your own own purposes but to help you learn to really use Prezi effectively I want to start with this option here start blank Prezi and this is just going to bring up a completely blank Prezi that I can use to really teach you how to use it so a blank Prezi comes as you would expect completely white background except for these guidelines that appear vertical and horizontal guidelines and we also have a frame that's what they call these this is a circular frame you start with at the beginning of your presentation building and um, notice similar to PowerPoint there's an option to click to add text and another one to click to add more text okay I'll do that in just a minute but first let's take a look at the interface here at the left we have something that is gonna remind many people of PowerPoint okay you have what looks like slide number one and then we can add later a, a second one and a third and a fourth but this is deceptive it's not really a slide we don't really use slides in Prezi and to really help you understand this better I'm gonna zoom out and you can see instead of slides Prezi just utilizes one massive canvas and notice that I can also zoom in and you can zoom in quite quite far as well so you can zoom out and zoom in and you have all of that real estate that you can use to create your presentation and share information with the viewer with the public or with your class so you need to know how to get around in this big canvas that you have to work with I'm just using the mouse I'm clicking and dragging on 
the canvas and pulling. Okay, so that's how you move up, down, left, right. You can also zoom in, and the main way to do that is to use the wheel on the mouse, the scroll wheel or something similar on your mouse. Okay, so that I think explains this thing at the left. Instead of representing slides, it doesn't represent slides. What it does is it represents the first thing that you'll see. Okay, so the first thing that people will see when they look at this presentation is my frame, my circular frame. And I'm going to be referring to these as zooms because each one of these, right now we just have one, but eventually we'll have more, and each one of those represents a zoom in Prezi. Because notice what happens when it comes to that part of the presentation, it zooms in on whatever is pictured here at the left. Okay, so that explains the left hand side and there's also a button down here that says edit path and there's a button up here that says circle frame by default and those are important. I'll talk about those in a few minutes. Across the top of the screen we have some more options. There's things that we can insert, there's things that we can customize and again those are important things that are, we're going to look at later. There's some save options here in the upper left corner. Your Prezi will automatically save every so often, but you can force it to save by clicking the save button. Okay, and then over on the right, we have some things to do when you're done with your Prezi, for the most part. You can click to present it right in Prezi itself. You can also share or send it. There are some settings you can adjust. There's a help option, and you can exit when you're done. So I think that does a pretty good job of explaining what you're seeing here, what the interface is. Now let's look at how you would go through the process of building a presentation in Prezi. So the first thing I want to talk about is this circle. What if you don't really want a circle? Many times people don't really want a circle. Instead, you would want a different shape. So to do that, if you click on the circle itself, now you would do that by putting your mouse right on the circle and clicking. And notice what it did. It highlighted and, uh, you know, selected the circle. And up at the top, it gives me a menu of options I can use. Now, you may have noticed that when I first tried that, it didn't work. See, look, it didn't work. It's not working. The reason it's not working is because the circle is not fully visible and it's not front and center in this view that I have. It's close, but not quite. And that's something that's going to come up over and over as you use Prezi. Sometimes you won't be able to click on something and you, you might get frustrated. The solution to that is always to make whatever you want to deal with, whatever you want to work with, make it front and center and hopefully fully visible and then you can click on it and things should work properly. Once you've done that clicking on in this case you go up here to the options and you can see that you can easily switch it from a circle to a different kind of frame. You can make it a rectangle frame if you want, an invisible frame, which are pretty powerful, I like those a lot, and then you can also go to bracket frames. So it's just a different way to frame your information that you're sharing with people. Okay, I'm going to go with rectangle. So now that I've switched it to a rectangle, I can click outside the rectangle and it is set. Now if I, if I ever want to, I can click on it again. I could resize it. I could make it wider. I could make it shorter, taller, however you want to do that. But this is my first frame for, for my presentation. Okay, I just clicked on it and it zoomed in. And now I'm going to click to add text. I want to title this, and here where it says click to add text, I could put in my name as the author, or I could put something like a subtitle uh, that goes with the title. Uh, now, this is bothering me a little bit. Uh, my title doesn't really fit on one line. It put it on a second line. It's easy to fix that. I can just click on the text box, and then go to the right edge and click and drag to adjust that. Notice that you can click edit text, and there are a few options. You can go with title, font, subtitle, body. Okay, so I'm going to go with title there. You can make the text bigger, and you can do that by using this tool here, or you can go to the edge or the corner of the text box and click and drag. So those are both effective ways to do that. You can change the color and notice that you don't necessarily have to click and drag to highlight everything. You just pick the color and it changes. So that's kind of nice. You can italicize. There's some other options too. You can put in background colors to your text. So lots of things to, to explore there. You can also do bullets. You can center. And there's a few other things you can do as well. Okay, so there's my opening zoom. And you'll notice over here at the left, zoom number one. When I click on it, it zooms in. And here's a number one to indicate that, yes, this is my first zoom. Okay, I want to add a second zoom. And this will be the beginning of the content I want to share with the students. So I'm going to start with nouns. So I'm going to go up here in the upper left where it says circle frame. And I could click and drag to pull in a circle frame. And that's, this is another zoom that will be added to my list here at the left. If I don't want it to be a circle, I can click, change it to rectangle. Now that will be the default here in the upper left for things that I drag onto the screen. In this case, I'm fine with it 
being a circle. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with that. So I'm gonna click and drag, drop that onto the canvas, and I get to decide where do I want to put this. It could be within zoom number one. It could be outside zoom number one. It's really up to me, and that's one of the things I love about Prezi. You know, PowerPoint is great, but it's so linear. Slide one, slide two, slide three. You can, of course, link the slides and, and make it a little bit less linear. But Prezi forces the creator of the presentation to think about how do I organize this in a way that makes sense and that will help my students. So I've decided I want nouns, verbs, adjectives, all of those to be inside this initial zoom. I could put them outside, but I'm just thinking in this case, it makes more sense to have it inside the box that says the parts of speech. So as you can see I just used the scroll wheel to zoom in and out to get over to my circle and then I clicked on the circle and I used the uh, corner to make it the size that I wanted it to be. Now I'm going to click and drag and notice that there's a hand that's it's a handy handle that you can click and drag to put things where you want them to be. You don't have to use that but it, it does make it a little bit easier. There's also a plus and a minus sign to shrink or enlarge your frames. So this is my second zoom and I can go in and just click toward the top and I'll just type in nouns. Okay, this is the first part of speech that I want to teach the students. Now notice when I clicked and dragged this circle frame onto the screen, onto my canvas, notice that it automatically numbered it as two, number two. And over here at the left, now I have a second zoom or a second part of my presentation. Okay, so this is looking good. I would like some pictures though with my nouns circle here. So I'm gonna go up to the top where it says insert and I'll choose image. Notice that you can click here to select files that are on your computer. You can just click and even though Prezi is a cloud-based tool, it will look at your hard drive and you'll be able to upload pictures that you want to include. But even better, in my opinion, is this search for images on the web. So I can do a search for, let's say, a hat. So I drag that on. I'm going to put in a person. Okay, here's a person. And so now I have a person, a place, and a thing. All right. The only problem is they're way too big. They're not in the right place. So in Prezi, it's, it's quite easy to fix that. All you have to do is click on a picture and go to the corner of the picture and then you can click and drag to resize it. I'll do the same with my picture of Florida and the hat. Okay, now every once in a while you'll want to kind of overlap items and sometimes the overlapping won't be quite right. If I want to put the hat you know here on top of the image of George Washington it, it doesn't seem to be working. So the trick there is just so you know you can right click on just about anything in Prezi and just like in PowerPoint or Keynote when you right click you get additional options. It's the same with this online tool called Prezi. I can right click on the hat. I can choose bring forward or even bring to front and it would put it at the very top of the stack of pictures. In this case, I don't need them to overlap, but that's an important thing to know. And please take note that there's lots of other things you can do when you right click on an image or a word or a frame in Prezi. So I feel pretty good about that. Next up, I of course could go and click and drag a new frame and I could call this one verbs and I just clicked on it it zoomed in now I click on the, the white space and I type in verbs and I would just repeat the process continuing to put in pictures fill in words that I want to share with the students and um, adding more frames when necessary to my Prezi presentation now a few other things that people will want to know in PowerPoint a lot of us are accustomed to adding animations and other other things to our slides and to our presentations you can also do that in Prezi and the way you do it is you go here to edit path in the lower left corner. Before I show that, I want you to know that there is another way to edit path, but it's a little bit more limited. If you go to your list of zooms here at the left, you can see zoom one, two, three. I could reorder those. Let's say I want to start with verbs. All I have to do is click here and drag it to be the second zoom. Okay, so it's as easy as that. Okay, just click to reorder. So that's one way you can alter your path, edit your path, but the other is to go down here to the lower left corner, click edit path, and you can see it gives you basically a string here that takes you from zoom one to two to three. You can edit it this way, it's a little bit harder, but you could edit it by clicking and dragging that two and putting it somewhere else, okay? Same with the three, but like I say, those are a little bit harder ways of reordering. I like to just click and drag to put them in the right order. But there's another thing that you can do in edit path in this part of the screen. What you can do is notice that each frame that is part of the path 
one, two, three. Each one has a star next to the number for it. And that star is only visible if you click Edit Path in the lower left. You can see the star has gone away now. So if you click Edit Path, it appears. And you can then click on that star to animate anything that's inside the frame that you're dealing with. So I don't want to animate nouns. I want that just to be there when I zoom in on the, the frame. But I want George Washington to come in when clicked or when the presentation is advanced. And then I want the map to come in and then the hat. So I've clicked one, two, three on those. And let's preview what it would look like. I can click this button and it shows first one, then another, then the third. So I click done and I've just animated part of my Prezi, similarly to what I can do in PowerPoint. Now if I want to animate what's in verbs, same kind of thing click that star and I can go ahead and animate if I want to. When you're done animating or changing your path it's important to know that you need to click done in the upper right corner and now you're back. I'm finished also with these pictures here so I'm going to X out of that. Now I'm going to zoom out and you can see what I have so far. Let's say as part of this presentation I want to include some other elements in addition to pictures and text. You need to know that you can also add links. I could put in a URL and then just click outside the uh, text box and then that becomes a link, a hyperlink. Now it doesn't appear to be working right now, but the reason why is because I'm in edit mode. Once I present this presentation, that will be a live hyperlink. So that's how you put in links. You can also put in some other things. As you can see here, insert, in addition to hyperlinks like I showed you, and images. You can also put in shapes and symbols, and then there is a section specifically called shapes that has some of your basic shapes. In addition to symbols and shapes, you can see there's also YouTube videos. If you click YouTube video, it takes you to this little interface and you do have to get the YouTube link and on YouTube find the video that you want click on it and then you would copy the URL that's here highlight it copy it and then paste it in click insert and it pulls in the video from YouTube and makes it part of your Prezi other things that you can add notice that you can insert your own content. So the my content, what it is, is favorites that you have developed over the years of using Prezi. So for example, let's say this frame that says nouns is something that I might use over and over again. It would be a good idea for me to highlight it and select it. And to select all of it, what you can do is you can hold down the shift key and then click and drag and put everything that you want inside you know, what you're dragging. And then notice this pops up and you can group things together. That makes it easy to move them around. But you can also favorite it and look what it does it adds it to your list of favorites and you can see that now when I go to insert my content there it appears other things you can add you can insert different layouts you can draw arrows and lines you can use a highlighter pen to highlight some of the words or objects in your presentation you can add background music notice that you can also insert your own files if I choose insert from file I could pick a PDF a video an audio clip different things like that that are from my computer and I could put those in and they would become part of my presentation there are some limits to how big the file sizes can be and then finally notice that you can insert a PowerPoint. A lot of us have many, many PowerPoints that we've made over the years. If you want to convert them to Prezi, you can do that. So you can insert a PowerPoint and then use the slides. And if you want to watch a video on how to do that, I have a different video that goes through the steps of how to do that. Okay, so let's pretend that I've gone through and I've added all the parts of speech here uh, with examples and pictures and things. A couple of last things that I could do, I could click Customize, and if I want to add some finishing touches on this, I could put in a background image that would be behind all of the elements of my Prezi. It would sit in the background. Also, if I want to, I can add a theme to this presentation. Right now, it's just completely kind of bland, uh, just no th special theme at all, but notice that there are a bunch I could choose. I could click clear I could click night and it changes the fonts and it changes the color schemes and you know the arrows and the lines everything is slightly changed if I pick a different theme once you find a theme that you're happy with you can stick with that and then notice down here at the bottom of this customize window there is an option for advanced and I'll just click on that you can see here in the advanced you can kind of alter the theme that you've picked you can work with 3d backgrounds and if you're interested in that I have another video on how to to do 3D effects in Prezi. This is also where you can specifically choose different fonts for your presentation. So you can adjust it to one of these other fonts. It's still not a lot of fonts, but at least you get some other options that you can choose for the different kinds of fonts. So that's an important button, advanced. Okay, pretending that we're done with this, what I can do now is I could click present. 
and if I'm live in front of an audience I'm ready to go here it wants to know if I want to go full screen yes I want to allow that and now I can use the arrow keys on the keyboard the right arrow to advance and the left arrow to go backwards and it works you can see if I want to show this video I just click on it and I can click play okay and pause now, one of the nice things about Prezi, at any point I can use the scroll wheel to zoom out and give the big picture to the students, and they can see the big picture a lot easier this way by zooming out. And then to resume, I just use the arrow key, the right arrow key, to go back to where I was. You can also use spacebar to advance, and if you're used to having a presenter remote and using that, it should still work in Prezi. Mine does. It works very well. To get out of your presentation, you just tap Escape. So that's how I present. Nine times out of ten, I just load up my, my Prezi. I can make some edits if I want to, and then I just click Present. Notice that you can also share. If you click Share, you can share the Prezi with people. And when you do that, it shows you what your settings are for your Prezi. Because I have the Edu Enjoy account that's free for working teachers and current students, you can see here that I have options. I can make this a completely private Prezi. I can have it be public, but the URL is kind of hidden. It's not advertised anywhere or I can have it be completely public and I could even if I want to allow the public to reuse this presentation and you can see here this is the URL this is the link that I would copy and I could paste it on a website and anyone that clicks on it could see my presentation I could also add people this way I could go down where it says add people and I can put in an email address and I could add this person as an editor if I do this Jason and I will be able to collaborate and edit this document and and work on this presentation together if I don't want Jason to have that much control over it I would switch to viewer and then just click add okay so this is a way to invite people to either collaborate with you on the document or just to see it okay you can also see that there's an option to present remotely people can watch it and you can control the zooms and the progress of the presentation you can share it to Facebook you can download it as a PDF and there is also an option to download this presentation as a portable Prezi you could download it to your computer and you wouldn't need to have the internet in order to show the presentation I've presented in parks and in other public places where we didn't have have Wi-Fi we didn't have internet access but I was still able to use Prezi because of this download as portable Prezi so I'm gonna click that it packages everything together and then it downloads it to my computer in a zipped folder it includes a Windows version of it and a Mac in the same folder and it works really well the only kind of downside is of course YouTube videos and URLs in order for those to work you would need to have an internet connection. When you're done with your presentation, you can simply click exit. And when you exit, it takes you to a page dedicated just to this presentation. This is kind of the face of your presentation that you've just made. And you can edit it again get back into the editing interface and you can do some of the same things that I showed you before from inside the Prezi present remotely download you can also save a copy if you want to duplicate it and make a second version of it that's different you can do that here you can also sometimes save a copy of other people's presentations if they've enabled that and there's an option to embed and I've done this many times I've embedded the Prezi presentation onto my own website whether it's in Weebly or some other website builder you can do that also on this screen if I don't like the title that it gave my presentation I can click to rename it and I could trash the presentation if I'm done with it don't want it anymore now you can see if I go back into your Prezi's it shows up there as a presentation that I've made that belongs to me so in my opinion I've just given you a great thorough overview of Prezi and how to use it to create from scratch a presentation that you can then share that you can present and uh, deliver online if you want to see how to create a Prezi using one of their pre-made templates, I have another video that you can watch, and it's called Using Prezi Templates to Create a Presentation. So I hope you'll check it out. Thanks for watching, and I hope that you will subscribe to my YouTube channel to learn about more technology for teachers and students.